Up next in our agenda, we're going to talk about variables, operators, and loops. Let's take a look at C Sharp language syntax. We have our code all within a namespace called language syntax. When I create a new program and define a project named language syntax, it creates a namespace for me. A namespace is used to hold the class that we have in our code. The class is an object, in this case, the program class is the main object that will hold our program. You can add additional classes to your code as you start building your program. Each class can have one or more methods. In this case, we have the main method, which is necessary for a console application. And you may not see this in other applications, such as a Unity game project. Within the main method, I have a set of variables followed by some console output. Each variable has a couple of parts here. You see a data type on the left, which is in this case an integer indicated by I and T, followed by the name of the variable. In this case, the variable is called my age. Finally, we have an assignment for the variable, which is number 25. This indicates that my age will hold a numeric value of 25 because integer means it is a positive or negative value, which is a whole number. As long as there's no decimal points, we can store integer values in it. Next, we have two additional variables called thread count and total bugs. Here we see that we can uh, start to use multiple variables and we can define them in the same line. So thread count and total bugs are both of type integer, meaning they will hold num numerical values or numbers. Next, we have a string variable such as my name. So I have a string variable called my name and I've initialized it to have the value of Bob. You'll notice that Bob is in double quotes, meaning that it's a text string value. So any string variable can hold one or more characters within double quotes. And finally, we have a new name variable. Notice that it starts with a var keyword, which can be used to initialize variables of any type. As soon as it's initialized, in this case with the string another name, the variable new name immediately gets a data type for it. So just as we have int and string for the first few variables, new name automatically gets a data type of string just because it's been initialized to another name. This shows you how to use a special keyword named var so that we can have variables without having to specify the data type. But just know that as soon as you initialize it, it's going to be of the string type. Uh, if we had initialized it with a number, it would be a numerical value. Next, we have assignment. So we have my name equals Chris, and we've actually reassigned the value. Initially, my name was assigned to Bob. Now it's got uh, renamed to Chris. So that means that the my name variable will now hold the value of Chris. If you were to write this line out to the console, that's what we'd see. We do console.writeLine to write those values out. We're able to write out numeric values like my age. We're also able to write out string values like my name. And finally, we use console.readKey. Again, this is very specific to console applications, uh, just to wait for a keystroke before the program exits. You'll notice on the right, I have some other comments in red text. I have something called using statements all the way at the top. When you start a program, you'll automatically have uh, some libraries that you'll use within your program. Uh, those can be imported into your program using using statements. You're referencing libraries of code written by other people or even by yourself at an earlier time. We talked about namespaces and classes holding your programs. Um, also, we have something called a comment here. So slash slash indicates a one line comment. And towards the bottom, I have slash star indicating multi-line uh, multi comments. Anything that has slash slash in front of it will be ignored by the compiler. That means that you don't have to put code after the slash slash. You can put any comments you want, such as 
I made a note to myself to indicate this block is for initializing variables. Towards the bottom, I have slash star and star slash, where I can have multiple lines between these two um, symbols, two sets of symbols, starting with slash star and ending with star slash. That way I can have my comments across multiple lines. And finally, in between, I have another uh, red comment here that says data types. We talked about integers. We talked about strings. And we talked about uh, the var keyword. So var is used for indicating that a variable can change its data type. Um, but whatever value you have initially will be the first data type. And it cannot change as long as you've assigned a value. This is different from the JavaScript version of var, in which case a variable can have different data types. So just keep in mind in C sharp, as soon as you've initialized a var keyword uh, variable, the data type cannot change. Next, let's take a look at a quick demo showing language syntax.